did not come to have you to reflect back on the law. John the Baptist stood there. I preached it here the other night. John the Baptist did not put any emphasis on the law. There's one coming after me who's mightier than I. Now, behold the Lamb of God. That taketh right now, taketh his present tense, that taketh right now away the sin of the world. How could he have done it, preacher? Because in his veins was flowing the, the, the lifeline or the bloodline that was going to wash away every sin that anybody would ever commit except the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Say amen. He does not want you to live in a daydream world. He don't want you to live in a religion of yesteryear or tomorrow year. He wants you in a religion or a salvation, not religion, but a salvation plan that I am the resurrection. I am right now the life. I am right now the way. I am right now the truth. I am right now the life. Praise God. Raise your hands right now and believe me. That's what he wants you to do. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and praise the Lord. The church in the wilderness lived, lived in a, a hope of tomorrow, looking back on Egypt. Said, what in the world did you bring us out here for Moses to die? We'd be better off stay down in Egypt. Well, at least we had cucumbers to eat. Cucumbers. Praise God, they want to eat cucumbers. And the bread of life right with them. Hallelujah. I've given anything. Praise God, just eat a little bit of that man. I don't know what I'd give. I guess I'd give everything I've got right now just to be sitting in the midst of the people that eat that little piece of bread when he broke it and blessed it. I'd have given anything that I own right now, everything that I own, and I'd have, I'd have, I'd have swum, walked, done anything to got to been in that crowd that heard him teach on the mount. Praise God, I'd have given anything to see him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Raise your hand and praise the Lord. He was the resurrection and the life. He came for a church now. Jesus came to make a right now church. Not a church of tomorrow. Not a church of yesterday. But a church right now. Now the church set sail on the day of Pentecost. Jesus bought every ticket that was necessary. He bought every ticket and paid everything that you need to have paid. He paid it for you. Say amen. Now, here it was. Jesus was the Son of God. He was the real and the true resurrection and the life. Adam was the, the Son of God. But there was a difference in Adam. Adam was made and formed from something that was already there. Jesus was the product and the offspring of the Holy Ghost. He was the firstborn son of God. Born literally from the loins of God. Jesus came to purchase the church all through his experiences as the experience with Martha and Mary and Lazarus at the tomb. Every experience that he had was, was bringing more light to his reality and his being and his presence right now, not tomorrow, right now, bringing a church together. Paul said it was not Adam that transgressed, it was Eve that was in the transgression. God made a man right down on his, no, no doubt, right on his hands and knees, God went. And ladies and gentlemen, whether you'll understand this or not, it was Jesus that did it. If the word of God is true, listen to me and understand that the scripture is right. If the word of God is true, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, all things were made by who? The word. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. If that be the case, the 14th verse of the first chapter of John said, He, Jesus, was the word made flesh. All right, if that's the case, then the Word, from the beginning it's always been the Word, made a man, formed him from the clay of the dust of the ground, formed him and got eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose, mouth to mouth, and breathed and blowed into his nostrils the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. God was making and absolutely made him in his image. God was making preparation to making a way to replenish the earth. 
Literally, God knew that Adam was alone. God knew that he would fall. God knew that he would fail. But however, Adam did not fall as Eve did. Eve was deceived. Adam willfully sinned. Jesus had to come because, not because Eve's transgression, because Eve didn't carry the life seed. Absolutely, Jesus had to come because Adam willfully sinned. God told Adam, he said, of all the trees in the garden you can surely or freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in the day that you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt surely die. God had me in the spirit not long ago, about a year ago or so. God took me in the spirit, was revealing some things to me about this and talking to me. I wrote a lot of it down. It's at home about death. Did Adam really know what death was? He was a life, he was a life giver. He was, he was, or, or not a life giver, but a receiver of life from the life giver. He was a living creature. He did not know anything about death. Everything about Adam was life. Adam was made to live forever. Adam was made to replenish the earth. And literally, Adam was alone in God. Listen to this. God caused Adam, the first son, not the firstborn, but the first son, oh Lord, God literally put him into a deep sleep, I don't know how long he stayed in that sleep, opened his side and took a rib out. When God opened that side, listen, when God blowed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, God told Moses a great secret. He said the life of all flesh is in the blood. When Adam was received of, of, of God's breath and God blowed his breath into Adam's lungs and his nostrils, and Adam's lungs received God's breath, then somewhere in his very being, the bloodstream started circulating and the life was put in the bloodstream. The life of all flesh is in the blood. When this happened, Adam was alone. Now, I want you to know that Adam was, can I preach about, a, about two hours tonight? Adam was not an idiot. God made Adam on the same level and on the same basis of his own image and gave Adam a, a, a mind that was only second to God himself. Adam was no idiot. He was so smart that when God was, was forming the animals from the dust of the ground, he brought every one of them to Adam and let Adam name them all. And I read somewhere where there's over 500,000 different species of animals. Mister, it takes a genius to name that many animals. But there wasn't a help meet for Adam. Made in the image of God. Made in the likeness of, of God's image, given the very breath of God, made a living creature never to die, except he choose. Oh, praise God. God calls him to fall into a great sleep. And when God had put this life in Adam, it put the life cell in Adam's loins, right then, in the loins of Adam, he carried every child that would ever come forth from a woman's womb, right then. Where did it come from? It came from God. It came not out of the innermost being of God's heart. It came from God. Adam was there in a deep sleep when God cut his side or opened the flesh in his side and took the rib out. There had to be some bloodshed. Eve did not get her life directly. 
directly from God. Nowhere does it say God breathed into her nostrils. Eve, the, which was lacking to the church, got her life from her husband. Oh, Lord, I wish somebody could understand what I'm getting to. Paul said, I speak a great mystery concerning Christ and the church. Amen. Right down into his side he went. He took the rib. I, some uh, 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 doctor, medical doctor say that God took the rib that was closest to the heart. I don't know how true that is. But while Adam was asleep, he didn't know anything was going on. God took a rib out of him and took that rib and made a woman. The word made means build. He built a woman. He formed her and made her just exactly like he wanted her to be. Created them male and female before he ever made them. He saw them and God fulfilled the plan. Amen. When God took that rib, the blood came out. The rib came out in that little old bone of that rib that God took out of Adam. There was bone marrow. There was blood in that and Eve got her blood from Adam. Some of you just scraping the surface here. Pray, God, get down in here. Hallelujah. Don't understand what Paul was writing about. Raise your hands and praise the Lord. Adam came out of his sleep. God brought the woman to Adam. God had already spoken to Adam and said, You can eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. Eve didn't hear it. If Eve knew about it, Adam had to tell her. I believe Adam told her too. God brought the woman to Adam. And he said these two, or these twain, to be one flesh. And for this cause shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh why because her flesh her very being came out of Adam lo and behold the devil had to have some way to get seen into the world and he knew that he could not deceive Adam because Adam heard God plainly received the word, he knew Adam heard him, he knew Adam received God's word and told him not to eat of the tree, so Adam, or Adam could not be deceived, Adam knew better. So he had to find the next best thing, come up here Marsha, you be. Be You'll need this message in the next 42 months more than you need the food you'll eat the next 40 days. So help me, I speak the truth. Eve was Adam's wife and he loved her. He had to love her with a godly love because, ladies and gentlemen, in him was God's life. God told him, he said, replenish the earth, Adam. Replenish the earth. God literally, if you can understand this and receive this, God made a man from the dust of the ground, took out of the man a woman to be his helpmate, and told him to replenish the earth. And here it was when he told him to replenish the earth, uh, ladies and gentlemen, her being likened to the bride of Christ, her being likened to the church, her being likened to the part that came out of him, being part of him. Paul said you were bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Say amen. You're part of him. God literally, if you can understand this and receive this, God literally made this man and woman to born children for himself. Why? When God put in Adam the life breath and the life seed in his loins, it came down.
directly from God. It was God's seed. Oh, my God, I wish somebody could understand what I'm saying. But here it was. Eve, somehow or another, Satan had to find a way to get get sin into the world. He could not get sin into the world through Eve because she was not the bearer of the, the seed. Adam was the one that God put the seed in. He was the one that was the son of God. He was a product or, or just a portion of Adam, but Adam was the direct communication, the one that received the direct breath from God. The devil had to do something to get to Adam. He could not make Adam. If he'd have went to Adam and told Adam what he did, Eve, like I'm looking at you, Adam would have laughed at him and said, I've got a life to live. I can live forever. But God, God made Adam to live forever. I, that's another message. I'd have to preach another hour. But here it is. The devil had to have some way to get to uh, Adam. And the only way he knew that he could get to Adam was to get to the very thing he loved the most. God said the first and great commandment was to love the Lord thy God with all your soul, strength, mind, body, everything you have, and then to love your neighbors, you love yourself. God, this thing's crawling all over me. Raise your hands and praise the Lord. Eve, the property of Adam, the helpmeet of the first son. Now, I know Jesus was the only begotten Son of the Father. Jesus was the firstborn of the Father. Adam was made from the dust of the ground. And ladies and gentlemen, at that time, the dust of the ground was pure. It was not cursed by the Word of God. There wasn't anything. Adam was an unsinful creature. A living creature, no death anywhere. The only death was in Satan. If the life of God, if the nature of God is life, then the nature of the devil is death. If the nature of God is righteousness, the nature of the devil is sin, unrighteousness. Say amen. Eve was the only means, the only, only doorknob that he, that the devil could find to open the door to get to Adam. And the devil tricked Eve. It was her that was deceived, not Adam. It was Eve that was deceived in, in transgression. And when she took of the forbidden fruit, I don't know whether it was a peach, a plum, a pear, an apple. Nobody really knows what it is. That's right. You'll hear many preachers preach many things. Some say this, some say that. Nobody knows God has kept it hidden, and it'll be hidden in my knowledge till that day we understand. There are some things God don't want you to know. There are some things if you knew, you'd think God was unrighteous. And he is not unrighteous. He even hates with a righteous hatred. How could we understand this? Who among us tonight could comprehend the mind of God? But the devil tricked Eve and told her to stumble and fall. And here it was. Can you folks see this now? If you listen closely, this is important. Eve was, was close to Adam. Adam loved Eve. But when she turned around and saw her mistake, probably her world crumbled within, her world crumbled all around her. She knew she'd made a mistake. She knew something had happened. Here she was when she took of the forbidden fruit. Sin had entered into her personal life. Amen. Here was Adam standing here in his, his righteous state. He had not sinned. Can you understand what I'm saying? He had not sinned. He had not committed any wrong. He had not done anything contrary to God's word as yet. He had not done anything wrong. And now here was Eve with that fruit. Here was
she was, his bride. Here she was, his wife. Here she was, the one he loved. She'd already seen him. There was no way in the world that she could get back to him. He was righteous and she was sin. Can you see what I'm saying? So was the church. So were you alienated from God. There was no way that you could get back to his standards. There was no way you could get back to Jesus. So he had to come down in the... form of a man and walk among men and feel their troubles and feel their heartache and pain that he can raise you up to the heights of the You understand what I'm preaching? Oh God, I'm just about in another world. There was no way in the world. Here it was. It was a willing sacrifice. Adam could get, if Adam 
Adam went down to her, if Adam went down to her level, he could bring her back in the future. Oh, God, I wish somebody could understand this. If Adam, there was no way she could get back. Why? Because there was no substitute there. There was no sacrifice. God had to have a sacrifice. It wasn't Isaac. It wasn't Abel. It wasn't Adam. It was in the loins of Adam. It was not the Messiah. It was Jesus. So how can this be, Brother West? According to the flesh, he was made after the seed of David. But according to the spirit, after the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Say amen. Ooh, praise God. Some of y'all run out here. Some of y'all having a power to leave here tonight. Stick your tongue out the devil. Hallelujah. And box his jaws. Run and plumb out of your house when you get home. Raise your hands and worship the Lord. So Adam saw this. He loved his bride. He loved, can you see this? Jesus was not sinful flesh. Adam was a type of the son that was coming, just a type, an eternal son that was coming. Adam looked at his bride and loved her. Jesus looked at his church and loved it. His church was fallen in sin and filth and corruption. Nobody could bring her back. Moses couldn't do it. Elijah couldn't do it. David couldn't do it. Nobody had the power to do it but he himself. And so he took upon himself the form of a man. And for the first time, when God would stand outside of this tabernacle we're in now, he'd get in a bush and talk with Moses. He would inform them of what he wanted them to do. When he would be inside of the cloud speaking, telling the people, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, so forth and so on. In, in, I've preached this, I've touched on this before. God was among his people, but in different forms. When it came to Abraham and told Abraham in the form of a man that he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, all of these things, for the first time now, God was inside of a man, looking out of the same eyes of eternity, hearing through the same ears of eternity. Oh, God, I wish somebody could understand this. Hallelujah, the same voice that came walking in the garden in the cool of the day was speaking along the shores of Galilee, raising the dead and healing the sick. Oh, praise God. Raise your hand and praise the Lord. That was him. Adam couldn't, Eve couldn't get back to Adam. There was no way in the world, oh, how rich this is if you'll get it. There was no way in the world for, for Eve to come back to Adam. He had to come down to her level. I'm glad this is being taped. People be listening to this probably on a broadcast, radio broadcast, or maybe a long play album. The world needs to hear this. Jesus stood in the in the presence of all eternity and saw before he ever formed anything a church being born. It wasn't a church like we think. It was his church purchased by his own blood. Jesus was there in the same stead that Adam was, in the same place. Adam was just a type of the one that was coming. Jesus stood and saw his people on the downhill go nowhere in the world escape the damnation of hell, and he became a man, God and man together. He came in the form of a man. He was in the form of a servant. He was in the likeness of sinful flesh because man didn't have no way back to God. God came down to man's level for a season. Although God was not Partakers of man's sin. Although Jesus was righteous, although he'd never done anything wrong, he looked like sinful flesh. He looked like it, but he wasn't. He walked among men. He saw as a man would see. He felt pain as a man would feel. He knew what heartache was. He was acquainted with sorrow and grief. Hallelujah. The iniquities and the, and the sins of all people were laid upon his shoulders. And brother, he was willing to bring his pride back to church to bring his bride back to himself. God appeared in the end of the age. Thank God in the form of a man. Hallelujah. To do away with sin and corruption. 
Christian tapping under his feet and reading from the dead and purchased a church with his own blood. Only somebody here can understand what I'm preaching. Well, not willing to let his church go to hell. Not willing to let his bride, the church, perish. Jesus said, for this cause he came into the world. Not to do my will, but the will of he that sent him in the beginning. Oh, God, to do the will of him that sent him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Raise your hand and say thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Not willing to let the devil have any more control over his, his beautiful bride. He came to make a way to dress her in white. He came to make a way for her to walk back up back up the aisle again. Praise Amen. God in holy matrimony. He came to make a way for her to come back to his side and be part of him. He came to make a way for her to be his all over again. She was destined and doomed for hell. Sin, I feel that anointing now. Sin had crept into the church's life. You were going to hell. Everybody listening to my voice was on the road to hell. You were a part of the bride, but you're gone now. But Jesus said, whosoever will, let let them come and drink of the water of life freely. Here it is. He came to purchase the, the, the church. Ladies and gentlemen, men didn't kill him. You didn't kill him. Not at all. The soldiers did not lead him to the top of Golgotha's rugged brow. Not at all. Jesus said, men are not going to take my life. You don't even have the power to take my life. He didn't, in, in so many words, say that, but that's what he meant. He said, this one commandment have I received of my Father, that I have the power to lay my life down and take it again. Adam had the power to keep his life in the beginning, but because he loved his his wife or his bride, hallelujah, which was a type of the love that Jesus would have for the church, he was willing to become a little lower than the angels, that through suffering he might inherit or have a more excellent name. That they say amen, folks. Oh, God, raise your hands and praise the Lord. You better believe it. When you are going downhill, when you are ready to step into the pit, when you are ready to go deep into the heart of sorrow and destruction and despair and damnation and eternal judgment and eternal punishment. Hallelujah. Jesus, in the form of a man, God manifest in the flesh, came, shed every drop of blood that it was going to take necessary or be necessary in the courts of the universe to set you free. He was willing to pay it all. Praise God when he went uh, to the top of Golgotha's hill, the cross that he carried didn't cause him to fall. The weight of the wood didn't cause him to fall. Because the cross was heavy wasn't uh, what caused him to fall, but because he was carrying the, the, the sins of his bride upon his shoulders. He was carrying them to the top of Golgotha's hill to wash them away and remit them forever and to bring her back to himself. Oh, Lord, raise your hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. That ought to make you keep your hands in the air and praise God. Then ought to raise your hands. Everybody ought to just raise your hand in this building and begin to thank you for what is done. That's what is done. The next time the devil tells you you don't have anything, you remember this message and you tell him I have got it. Come on, folks. Raise your hands and praise him. Jesus paid the full penalty. He cashed every promissory note that God had ever promised. He cashed every check that was ever written. He cashed every savings bond and gave you eternal life. Oh, praise God. God. And the third day, ladies and gentlemen, hallelujah, as, let me go on just a minute, please, let me finish this, as, as,
Adam went into a deep sleep, so did Jesus go into a deep sleep, and the blood was shed. Ladies and gentlemen, from his little side, forthwith came blood and water, that same water and blood of cleansing and salvation power. From his side flowed the water and the blood. He went into a deep sleep for three days. They laid him in the tomb, but bless God, on the third day, an angel of the Lord descended, hallelujah, and rolled a stone away, and Jesus stood up on his feet, hallelujah, the resurrection and the life, he stepped outside that tomb, and he said, all power is given unto me, both in heaven and earth, oh my God, raise your hands, and praise the Lord, raise your hands for heaven, and worship your creator, raise your hands, hallelujah, everybody stand to your feet, and raise your hands, and go with high your master, go with high Jesus, oh, praise God, yes, he did it for you, yes, he did it for you, yes, he did it for you, look at the boy, he did it for you, he did it for me, to take a church. He come to take a bride. Hallelujah. Out of a people. A people out of a people. Can you folks get hold of this? You're a part of that thing. If you, you didn't do anything good to do it. You didn't do anything good to get in. It was what he put inside of you from the beginning. Oh, glory to God. Raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus, for putting me in that church. Oh, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. I wish somebody would raise your hands and worship the Lord. I mean, somebody would raise your hands and praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, God. I am a holy. We call on the Messiah.
I was talking in reference to past tense and, 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 and future tense. Many of us are living in a future tense world, but God's a right now God. He wants to do it for you right now. He's got something for you right now. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. He's a right now God. Hallelujah. He's got a healing right now. He's got a deliverance plan right now. Hallelujah. If Jesus was willing to pay the full price, if he was willing to give you the glory and the joy of his name, then you you shouldn't be ashamed to raise your hand and accept what is given you. Hallelujah. Thank God. Just raise your hand and say, Lord, I do. I do accept. Woo, praise God. I do accept your name. That's what you say. Praise God. When a bride and, and her future husband come up before the preacher, hallelujah, he said, will you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? She says, I do accept his name. Are you folks listening? When he says, do you accept her to be your lawful with your wife? You say, I do accept to give her my name. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. When you come to Jesus, you say, I do accept your name. And he'll look at you and say, I do accept you to give you my name. And give you power over the devil. Raise your hands and praise the Lord.
than a baby When Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes And laid him in a manger He was more than a child When he astounded the doctors With his teaching in the temple He was more than a man As he taught the people on the mountain with all authority He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings Jesus is all that I ever hoped to see And he was more than a man As he walked along the shores of Galilee As he Was shed for you and me, and he was more than a man as he walked along the shores of Galilee. As he healed the sick and raised the dead and set captivity free, and he was. Thank you. 